So we are still on the mooring two days later by the south entrance of Hare Castle Tunnel. It's an interesting place to moor because it's quite nice but you've got the noise of the fan for the tunnel in the background and you've got quite a bit of shouting and random toots as people prepare to go in and then for the last two days like I get I, there's this thing about being the first through the tunnel so people turn up at eight o'clock or seven thirty, ready for the tunnel to open at eight and then there's the shouting and the tooting because you have to be the first through the tunnel yeah <laughs> so it's quite interesting it's not exactly too shallow but where we are there's a section where if the boat moves the wrong way it scrapes on the bottom a little so bit, yeah. every time the boats go past there's a little bit of okay i'm awake <laughs> so um kind of in the middle of nowhere here although there's quite a lot of industry about um there's this thing called the flame that never goes out which i walked past yesterday on the way to what's the place at the top of the hill is it tunstall tunstall heath or something yeah. like that yeah which isn't particularly nice but there's lots of shops there so i went to Screefix and i went to little which is about a half hour walk up a hill it's not really ideal but it's all right I think it's called the flame that never dies. It's meant to represent the steel industry that disappeared here. <laughs> that did die. Yeah. It's like, it's the flame that never went out, except for it went out. But now there's a metal one. <laughs> made of metal that is no longer made here. The park where that is is really nice. Good when idea. I, when I was walking back from Lidl, I stopped there and had a little picnic with my chocolate croissant that I bought. She had a little picnic after going to Lidl. It happens. I understand. Every time I go to Lidl and come back with several less croissants than I, I only bought one for me the store with. I bought one for me and one for you and yours yours made it home you're nicer than me and then yeah yesterday morning we were just eating breakfast and the first boats came through this way I don't know what time it was maybe boats had gone that way and then they were coming this way I don't know anyway one boat went past and it was some viewers that we've been talking to that are on their narrowboat holiday so it's really lovely to meet them finally because they passed us last year when we were at Braunston, but they didn't knock and say hello. And they passed us earlier this year when we, I think on the Middle Witch or something. Yeah. And it was and too we, early. We, we it was were like seven still o'clock. asleep. Yeah. So they finally, which, finally met them. And then behind them was another boat um, that we knew, which was Paul from the Let's Explore channel. Well, he stopped and had a good long chat with him. He stopped, but he didn't pin up very well. <laughs> so some boats went past and he... <laughs> so some boats went past and the front of his boat came out and I, and I just looked over and saw a boat moving and there was, like, basically every mooring up this way was full at that point. Um, so I just saw a boat swinging out and I didn't realize it was his, so I just ran up, like, to pull the thing over and there's a guy going, do we know whose boat this is and everything? And, and, and is there anybody on board? I like... oh, I know. And all of a sudden he yells, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> and I only at that point gotten on to going, oh yeah, right, I know this boat. <laughs> I was too busy trying to pull it in and looking at the ropes and stuff. So yeah, we're moving on this morning. We are just north of Stoke-on-Trent, I think, and Longport and Middleport and all the potteries. I think we're entering pot pottery land. Mm. Stoke-on-Trent, isn't that like an amalgamation of a few pottery it, towns? It was... Well, it was five industry towns. It was five five separate towns, and then they joined in, I think, 1910 as Stoke-on-Trent, and they're known from a novelist as the five towns. Uh. So they're kind of, you know, they're not five towns anymore. There's one town. This happens in history of all towns, but here it's recent history. So looking forward to um, kind of seeing some of the things below it. There's the Wedgwood Pottery. Um, factory, the current factory. Um, the old factory is actually in the Stoke-on-Trent area, but it, uh, it was demolished a long time ago. Yeah, I don't know how far we're going to go today. Just going to go till we stop. Yeah. And we're going to stop. Yeah. Shall we get moving? Shall we get moving? Sun's up. It's nice. There isn't yet a telephone boat from the tunnel, but there will be one within well, no, two one's, hours. Yeah, one's just gone through. Yeah. It's funny because they sent their first lot through that were queuing this morning, and then every time a boat turned up since, they've sent one through. So. I guess no one's queuing at the other side yet. Yeah, so they're just pumping them through northbound. And there's another one coming. Right. Tell me it's looking like it's going to be a beautiful day as we prepare to leave our mooring for today's cruise. Here is yet another boat arriving to go through the tunnel.
After all that industry, we get to Westport Lake, where there's a park, cafe, visitor center, and of course, a lake. There are lots of lovely moorings here, but sadly only one boat. Maybe the rest all set off early for the tunnel. We are now passing Top Bridge Pottery, which later became the Price and Kensington Pottery. The first pottery factory was built here in 1773, around the same time that the Trenton Mersey Canal was completed. It was built by John Brindley, the younger brother of James Brindley, before it was sold to John Davenport in 1794, who also acquired other potteries in the area. This is a bottle kiln, which is named for its shape, not its product. The buildings at Longport Wharf date from the 1840s, and there's now a boatyard and brokerage occupying the site. Historically, the wharf was used to store raw materials and manufactured goods for the potteries. This is Middleport Pottery. There's a visitor center and cafe here with mooring outside. Hopefully we'll stop here on our way back, but for now we continue south. Waterworld looks like fun. We arrive at Etruria to find a queue of boats has formed above the Summit Lock. This is a good excuse to chat to the other boaters waiting and play with some boat dogs. Summit Lock, as the name suggests, is one of the highest locks in the country. We are now above the Stoke Flight of five locks and also at the junction with the Calden Canal. It's an interesting spot. There's a toll house, warehousing, blacksmith forge, and a graving dock here. They're now all part of the Etruria Industrial Museum. The graving dock was originally used to gauge new boats before they went onto the waterways. The boat coming out of Summit Lock ahead is making the very sharp right-hand turn at the junction onto the Calden Canal, making way for us to enter the lock. A boat has just come out of Johnson's Lock, so it's ready and waiting for us. And we have some much appreciated help from a volunteer lock keeper. We have a short wait at Ridgeway's Lock as another boat is coming up. George finds a cool spot in the shade and another boat dog comes to join him. These 
two surviving and restored bottle kilns were once part of the Cliff Vale Works. Originally, there would have been many more in this location. Stoke Bottom Lock with Joe driving. It's set against us so we have a little while to wait while I fill it. We are now passing through Stoke-on-Trent. Another bottle kiln, this one at Dolby Pottery. After seven miles and five locks, we decide to call it a day and take this shady mooring near Trentham. Uh, that was a nice ride. It was really nice. Like that first section when we left, where were we this morning? Oh yeah, across the tunnel. Um, was kind of quite industrial, but it, it was really pleasant and all the towpath was like quite wide and paved so this was really easy for me to walk but that also meant there was lots of cyclists yeah <laughs> lots of bicyclists. right at the top of the locks is the etruria industrial museum but apparently it only actually opens for a few weekends a year um so there was not much to actually see no, there it's interesting buildings from the outside i didn't film any because i went um I went ahead to set the next lock, or the, it was the lock keeper who sent me ahead to set the next lock, and he said he'd finished that one, but so I didn't feel like, as you come down the second lock, there was all these interesting the old buildings, buildings and, and the yeah. two old work boats and stuff. Yeah, I didn't get a shot of it either, so we'll have to get more of it on the <laughs> way back. But unfortunately, it's not open, so we can't actually go in and see it. Um, apparently, there's a bunch of like steam-powered machinery in there and stuff. Yeah, so there's lock keepers on the first two locks, and the first lock was pretty deep, and apparently it's quite violent going the other way, so we need to remember that when we go back. Yeah, well, all of those would be, because when there was one, it was the last lock, you uh, second to last lock, where you were driving, mm -hmm. and I went forward and I had to raise the paddles to let the water in, and it was it was bubbling and shooting and churning, and like lead, it was putting real waves in there, so I think it must be pretty nasty to be inside those when they're when they're moving up if they're just pulled all the way open so yeah when we hit the whole flight i think we'll just go up slow yeah and there wasn't any really anywhere to moor um until we got to here this is like the first real place so yeah uh, there was one spot between two of the 
locked uh, where yeah. you could have stopped. Yeah. But then once you get below all the locks, you're basically in the middle of Stoke on Trent. Yeah, and like you're at you're near sort of Stoke Station and you're passing um there's like an Amazon and Warehouse. a Sainsbury's distribution, um, center. distribution center and there's a recycling facility. And then as you get a little further down, there's the football club stadium. Mm. And, and it's just lots of large buildings and not really anywhere to moor up. And we've come to Hemheath Bridge. Hemheath Bridge in yeah. Trentham. Yeah. And there's a place called Trentham Gardens, which looks really nice, but it's quite expensive. Yes. So I don't think we'll go there. So now we're uh, about a mile above Barliston, yeah. where the um, Josiah Wedgwood factory is, the current Wedgwood factory. It used to be up in um, Eritrea. Eritrea? That is hard to pronounce. It's, yeah, it is. Yeah. So basically, it's an area that's absolutely famous for its pottery and dishes and china. And it's, you know, definitely a nice thing if you've got an interest in So why did it all start here? I think it's because the clay was here. Uh, that would make sense. And I guess Stoke-on-Trent was actually five like distinct pottery towns that eventually merged into one, you know, governmental area. So the whole area is just surrounded in, in the remnants of the old pottery industry. Back in the day, you would have been coming up this way and it would have just been huge plumes of smoke, right? Because it's just burning all of these these coal fires to try and bake all of these pieces of pottery that are being shipped all over the, the empire. So it was famously smoky, dark area. Ooh, and there was one George moment we should talk about, which was when he um, startled the mud hen. <laughs> Just gave that poor bird the absolute panic. He wasn't even looking for birds because he's um, it's quite hot today. And I was giving him water at the locks, but he prefers canal water. But here, the canal is much lower than the towpath, so he couldn't reach down and drink it. But he kept looking. At one point, he looked. And this poor bird was just like, quack! <laughs> just flew out at the boat. I, I, I and was... then George was like, OK, I'll chase you. Yeah, I felt really bad, though, because I... We'll be asleep. Yeah, he was just panicking. That one was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to, comment down below. Also, if you feel like subscribing, just do so. And click the button that looks like a bell if you want to get a notification every once in a while. We've decided to start drying his poop and incorporating it into sculptures. Sculptures of oversized bananas. We're not sure why, but there's going to be a meaning. We basically... Oh I'm so tired. Why well, was it relevant? Was it relevant? Well, it's nothing to do with us if there's another boat coming. Oh yeah, I want to ram. He doesn't. Ah. Well, don't. Anyway, we'll be coming back through this tunnel after we've been to Stone and Stoke and Great Hayward and the... And Leak. Calden and Leak. The place where the leak was invented. And the place where the stone was invented, don't forget. Yes. Okay. I think the stone may have invented before that, but the, the leak was discovered. Somebody was like, what is this great grassy thing? Hmm, smells like an onion. We've got three leaks. Do we? Well, we should make some leek and potato soup too. We've got potatoes. We don't want leaks on a boat. That's the thing. Like, people should not have leaks on a boat. It's very important. Right. Okay, we're ready? Stop to Eritrea. Mm -hmm. No, not Eritrea. It. It's not Eritrea. That's a country in Ethiopia, or beside Ethiopia. Um, whatever you do, don't let me be caught staying. It was in Ethiopia. Uh, Et Etruria. Etruria. Yeah, Etruria. I keep, I'm, I'm like, no, it's, it's not Etruscan. But that's the funny thing. Like, one of the buildings, the lime kiln there, um, sorry, the bone, bone and lime kiln said Etruscan bone and lime kiln. And I'm like, wait, it says Etruria, but this is Etruscan. Yeah, people are strange. <laughs> um, but it's not near a tria. Very important. There was the two bottle kilns side by side that looked like God's binoculars. Those were kind of cool. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, testicles, testicules, testicle. This is a good excuse to chat to the other boaters, waiting and play with some dogs. You got that wrong. Yep. 
It's set against us, so we have a little weight while molecule. It's set against us, so we have a little weight while. It's set against us, so we have a little weight while mo. It's set against us, so we have a little weight while. <laughs> Slow down a little bit. <laughs> we arrive at Stoke Bottom Lock with me driving for a change. It's set against us, so we have a little weight while Michael fills it. <laughs> I seem to have real problems with your husband's name. <laughs> we arrive at Stoke Bottom Lock. <laughs> now I'm laughing. We arrive at Stoke Bottom Lock with me driving for a change. It's set against us, so we have a little. <laughs> Damn it! You might have to do this one. You do it. We arrive at Stoke Bottom Lock with me driving for a change. <laughs> We arrive at Stoke Bottom Lock with Joe driving for a change. That sounds cynical when I say it. After seven miles and five locks, we decide to call it a day and take the shorty mi- 